right if loving you is wrong fans well it's time to do a quick recap and uh yeah i mean the oh so right reunion special was everything that i thought it would be so i honestly can't sit up here and say i'm disappointed because I spoke with a few people, um, you know, since the event Tuesday night, and I said I wasn't disappointed. Uh, it was actually pretty good. And before I get into my full thoughts on it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you are new, as well as hit the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out when I post new content. Also, my latest video on the channel um, from yesterday or a couple days ago, depending on when I record, uh, post this video, I was able to do an interview with Sophia Greenleaf, a.k.a. Desiree Ross. And, you know, if you want to watch the full interview, it is on the channel. Hopefully that is the first of many interviews to come. So make sure you check that out. Now, uh, on the own YouTube channel, they've posted various clips of the cast members uh, you know, talking about something in regards to the show, how it affected their lives. At this moment, I don't know if they plan on putting the whole thing on the YouTube channel. To be honest, I don't see why they wouldn't do that. I mean, for the Greenleaf going up yonder special, they put it on there. So I'm hoping they do the same thing uh, for the If Loving You Is Wrong reunion. Now, I think for me, like I said before, going into the reunion, I was looking forward to seeing the cast together and reminiscing and that's exactly what we got but honestly my favorite parts were their kind of individual Tyler Perry moments but also uh, the fact that we indeed saw that these people were indeed a family I mean when you think family dynamic and cast members the first thing I go to is the haves and the have nots because I feel like we've well let me just say let me say I because I really wasn't following following if loving you is wrong at such um a tight level like I was with the haves and have nots but I feel like online we definitely saw more of the behind the scenes family aspect for the haves and have nots cast when in reality the same could be said about if loving you was wrong and I really love when everyone took a moment to reflect on different things or they kind of piggybacked off one another's statements like hey when you brought up this and like when I'm in a scene with you it makes me do better because you're such a professional and they talked about how the show changed their lives so that was really good and if the special becomes available on the own network um youtube channel i definitely recommend watching the entire thing i mean minus commercials is about 40 minutes long let me just say up front you know edwin i, I want to call him kelly call her kelly i'm no investor's character she did a fantastic job hosting um i really love that aspect of it she did a very 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 great job of that and um i I ain't going to lie. I was like, wow, I didn't know they were getting random fans to call in briefly to ask a question. Kind of glad I wasn't on there only because I know for a fact I would not shut up. I, I would like go in depth and it's like we got a time limit. So, no, I think it was pretty cool. But as a guy, I felt some kind of ways like how come it was only female fans that got to call in for questions and then it's like, why did the one woman ask Esperanza what happened to Mika? It was clear in the episode, Mika was dead. But I do feel bad for the cast because I feel like no matter how five, ten years from now, people, uh, Amanda Clayton, she will never live that down. Ever, I feel like anytime she runs into a fan, they're going to ask, who's the baby daddy? I don't care. I mean... Bless her heart and bless all the cast members because, like I said, they they answered the questions to the best of their ability and basically the way they think things should have ended. Like, you know, Amanda was like, oh, yeah, well, I think it was pretty much implied and I hoped it was Ian being the father and Alex gets the help she needs. And then when Heather was like, I hope Marcy gets a happy ending, I'm like, <laughs> you murdered someone. And, uh... Natalie was like, you know, oh, yeah, me and Lucian moved the hell out of that uh, neighborhood and went far away, got married. And, um, yeah, I mean, I felt bad because the men only got, like, a few minutes of screen time. Like, they only popped in for, like, a cameo appearance, and we didn't get any of their OMG moments. But, like I said, I'm not faulting them for that. It's just, like... It was only like a 40-minute reunion. Honestly, it could have been two hours. I would have sat through it because I really enjoyed what we got. As a guy, I'm kind of like, man, why can't there be any men on there asking questions? And the guys had a brief cameo. But 
I loved it for what it was. It really was a wonderful reunion. But um, unfortunately, guys, I, I truly feel like um, this is it. Like, I really don't feel like there's ever going to be a season six or a grand finale to answer all the questions. Because unlike Greenleaf, where they announced the finale or the final season and then like a few days later announced a spinoff because they responded to the fanfare. I just don't see Tyler Perry doing a re, uh, final season. Maybe like like he did with the pains. And if they ever do bring back, if loving you is wrong, please, Lord, don't let it be as bad as the pains. Like three years later, it's like, well, you asked for it and it's coming back. But I, here's the thing. With if loving you is wrong, I feel like fans really want conclusion rather than an extension of the series. Do, do you hear me? I feel like fans, we want a conclusion. We don't want like five more seasons. We just want the storylines that were promised to us to be finished to be finished because they didn't get finished at all. All they did was promise, oh, this is a can't miss a single episode no more cliffhangers, bodies will be dropping, blah, 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 blah. It's like you, even if you killed like all the main cast in the final episode, not only would that have been a terrible ending, it would have been extremely disappointing because there are like 20 other storylines you didn't even bother to pick up on. So overall, if you went into this reunion, expect I know some people were expecting Tyler Perry to uh, pull up. I was like, nah, he ain't going to pull up. And I ain't saying that like, nah, he don't care. It's like, nah, this was just like for the cast, you know, a cast reunion. And it is what it is. But I thoroughly enjoyed it because, like I said before, I came into it with expectation of it being more about the cast reminiscing about good times as opposed to us getting conclusive answers to the storylines that weren't resolved in the finale. But just my opinion. So, um... If anything else, like I said before, the moments where they reminisced on Tyler Perry, like when Kelly mentioned how her mother uh, was experiencing, um, what, what was it, cancer, I believe. And, you know, Tyler Perry was like, you know, is there anything I can do? And it's like, um, you know, when Amanda was like, you know, I was working as a waitress and then I got this opportunity to audition and I got the role. And, you know, as the list goes on, all the different casts are talking about how Tyler affected them and then i loved how kelly ended it by bringing up the stars on the hollywood walk of fame sorry not the hollywood walk of fame but on the tyler perry sound studio stage lots and i'm like that was truly one of my favorite tyler perry moments yes he's donated a lot of money to a lot of ne uh, people in need but i feel like giving a moment to give a star to like the th these amazing cast members was phenomenal and i have no doubt that as time goes on uh, the cast of like um, uh, Sisters, The Oval, Ruthless, Bruh. Maybe someday they'll get their stars somewhere down the line. Obviously not yet because, well, the shows are still new. But with the ratings they've been getting on BET, I don't doubt that they'll get their stars. Oh, I'm sorry. Had the TV playing. Uh, I don't doubt that they'll get their stars at some point. So I really do um, hope the best for them. But uh, overall, guys, um. I do plan to do my if loving you is wrong and have and have not rewatched it soon. I know I keep saying that, but I really do mean it because, well, I kept saying the Zoom thing, but then I got pushed into it. And then the Desiree Ross thing went amazing. And let me just say that I appreciate the feedback on the uh, interview. I was reading the comments and uh, people really enjoyed it. It was my first time doing a YouTube premiere. And basically I watched the interview along with you all and, uh, for the 15 to 20 people watching, we were chatting it up. So maybe I'll do that more often. But I do hope to interview some of the If Loving You Is Wrong cast in the future. I know Kelly said she will be down for an interview. And um, maybe, I mean, I feel like I've talked about the show all I can. I mean, maybe I'll do a video like how I would want a season six to look or something like that. But... You know, it's not something I want to rush to do because really there's no need of beating a dead horse. It just seems like we're not going to get a conclusion. I guess the sooner we can accept that, the sooner we can move. I mean, personally, I, I've accepted it. It's like, but I know people to this day who want too close to home to come back, but I just don't feel like it's coming back for if no other reason than the fact that the Oval is a show centered around the first family. So 
I doubt Tyler Perry would, you know, bring back another show with the same premise, so to speak, with uh, Too Close to Home. And yeah, Charles and the Haves and the Have Nots, but that's really not the main plot of the show anymore. Uh, let's see. I, yeah, that's really all I got for you. I mean, I will say that I think we will just have to keep our eyes out for the Haves and the Have Nots. I will let you all know when they start filming for season season nine. I mean, the sad part is, like, with If Loving You Is Wrong, obviously they did not film a season six. And based on the way the cast were answering the questions, I just feel like if there was even a script written for season six, they never saw it. That's just my opinion there. But let me know what you thought of the reunion. Did you tu uh, tune in to watch it? And, uh, yeah, I, I, lo I loved it for what it was. Yeah, I think that's the best way to answer. I loved it for what it was. And, you know, just congratulations to the, the amazing cast. I know a lot of them have been uh, in a lot of other projects since the wrapping up of their filming back in, what was it, 2018, you know, from Edwina and, and you know, Black Light. I feel like a lot of the Tyler Perry cast pop up in um, the CW or superhero shows like Edwina was in Black Lightning as Tobias Wells' sister for a few episodes. I know April, a.k.a. Natalie, she was in the last season of Supergirl, I remember, Heather is on a show on the CW. I forget the name of the show, but it wasn't a superhero show. She was a main character on that. Um, bu, 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 uh, I had a brain fart there. And the list goes on because the cast are always working. So, um, you know, to those who still didn't get their questions answered, I, I, I'm sorry. Like, I wish there was something I can do. I mean, if I had the credentials and the um, and the opportunity i mean look i know tyler perry has a lot of place a lot of things in the works but i just feel like hey if i could just like communicate with tyler perry hey tyler if you if you can give us like maybe eight to ten more episodes where you wrap everything up i know fans would really appreciate it and again not to sound entitled but I feel like that would be a great way to wrap things up. Uh, if anything else, we did get confirmation that Eddie is dead. I mean, Esper uh, Zule was like, you know, hey, Esperanza killed Eddie and her daughter died. So everything else just kind of died with her. So basically, Eddie's dead. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. But thanks so much for tuning into this video. Uh, maybe I'll do a video about season six in the near future. But I guess if I don't do that, just expect and if loving you is wrong, recap soon. Um, I'm going home tomorrow morning, which is Friday, and I will be back. I honestly don't know when. It will be sometime next week. I don't know if it's going to be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the Monday. No, I'm just kidding. But I don't know. Usually I go home, and then if it's like I can't stand being there for more than 48 hours, I leave. But I don't know. It depends on how things go. But, um... Yeah, I maybe I'll start to rewatch next week. I know the tax deadline is the 15th, so I really got to finish my taxes too. So, yeah, just to, I'll do the rewatch this month sometime. I promise. Uh, apparently, Bruh is finally up to, updated to BET Plus. So I'll watch that, record that review, and be done with it. But thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Like I said, please, please, please check out my Desiree Ross interview. Had a good time doing it. And uh, I'll catch you all later. Shout out to the patrons. Follow me on social media. Donate to the channel if you would like. And I'll talk to you soon.